So today, I don't have much of a plan, uh, except answer questions about the exam. And when we run out of questions, we'll leave, because it's nice outside, and there's some sort of other talk going on right now. Um, all right, so yeah, today is just open the floor for exam questions. Um, just the latest update on, on people completing the assignments. So remember that you have, we're going to hold office hours through the remainder of the week, but you have, you know, probably until like next Friday to complete, keep working if you want to keep submitting things. Um, again, we'll, we'll keep answering questions on the forum and stuff like that. No office hours next week, there's exams, but we do have office hours for the rest of the week. So um, if you're still working on assignment three or assignment two, you know, keep coming in. There's still people around to help you. Uh, I think it's going to stop. Oh, you know what? There we go. Okay. The course evaluations are now about 72%. I suspect everybody in here has done the evaluations. That's the problem. I end up talking with the people that did them. But if you have some friends in the class, you might want to email them and say, hey, you should do the evaluation. Uh, the exam is on Monday, so you just don't have that much time left to get your hands on these questions. And I actually really want you to do this because then I don't have to write as many questions. So, um, so please finish these, right? Um, yeah, so right now, uh, there'll be a short answer released as soon as I write it. Um, and then when you get to 80%, uh, you get the medium answer, or 95%. Uh, it's, po it's possible that these might come out on like Sunday night or something, so that's, uh, but you know, a little bit of time is better than none. Uh, so so please, uh, please finish these. The evaluate, has anyone done the evaluation? I'm assuming most people have. It's short, right? Yeah, it's easy. I'm sorry it's so ugly. <laughs> Oh my God, <laughs> they have like a, yeah. Does that number count the people that have dropped the class? No, it doesn't count the people that dropped the class. Yeah, I know, <laughs> good, good, good try. I like that, yeah. I know, I know, I know that too. And still, I, I know exactly how many students are in the class. And I can add the two numbers that are on the sheet, right? And they add up. No, I'm just, you guys are, this is good. You guys are, you know, you guys are regression testing me, but no, I've, I've done the math. Uh, there's 118 students left in the class. There's 118 students. Are I don't know why they have that button. I don't know why a lot of things about the course evaluation system. But um, anyway, uh, okay. So yeah, please. I mean, people can withdraw late, but no one has done that, as far as I know. So okay. Um, plus, you still have five percent. I'm not asking for 100. Just asking for 95. Right? Okay. Um, so I want to uh, give some shout-outs to the staff this semester, um, and I hope you guys will, will help me with this. Um, particularly, Carl. Carl is here. Um, you know, Carl has obviously been here a lot. I, you know, everybody in the course staff has done great work this semester, and I think the performance of students in this class on the assignments is a reflection of that. But Carl has, you know, done something very unusual this semester where obviously he's been here, he's been lecturing. I think he's been pretty good at lecturing. How many people agree with that? Yeah, I mean, Carl's awesome, right? So um, I really want to thank Carl, and let's give him a round of applause for. I've lost track of how many times he, he was a guest lecturer. When I asked him the first time, I was like, oh, this will just happen once, right? And now it's like, I don't know, it's been like 10 times or something. So it's sort of a little bit embarrassing on my part, but I mean, Carl has been fantastic. And I think for him, given what he wants to do, this was a nice experience uh, as well. And he obviously is really good at it. So uh, by the way, um, I'm going to suggest to the powers that be that Carl actually teach this class next year. Um, I know that they're looking for people to do it. Maybe they found people already, but maybe Carl is better than the people that they found. Um, so if he does that, then the course will be taught largely in its present form. Um, some of you guys may end up being involved with it and stuff like that. But I don't know if that's going to happen. You know, obviously, no one cares what I think anymore about anything. So all I can do is offer an alternative and see what happens. But I mean, how many people here think Carl would be a great instructor for the class? Yeah, me too. OK, great. I won't ask you to vote. <laughs> I won't embarrass anybody. Um, OK. The uh, course, the rest of the, the course TAs, right? So Ali and Carl have been doing a great job recitation. Uh, Vicky's been doing a great job in office hours. So let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> also, all the grading that they did. Um, by the way, Carl reminded me to uh, remind you to pick up your midterm papers. There's a lot of people that haven't done that yet. <laughs> if you like, want to have some sense of a how you did on the midterm um, and b you know, mistakes that you might want to avoid on the final. So we have those available. Come by office hours, and, and we can pick up your paper for you. The ninjas. So there was a, obviously a gazillion people that did office hours this year. Um, you know, I, I probably don't have all of them even up on the slide. Some of the people that finished have been showing up in office hours. 
Um, so I, I think you know, this is a big reason why the class works the way it does. I'm sure that you guys have your favorites on this list, but I think that you know, all these people made a contribution, so let's give them a big round of applause. Okay. Um, yeah, and, and none of these people were paid to do this. They were all sort of doing it out of the goodness of their heart. Uh, I put together a slide at some point for talk I was giving about how many office hours the volunteers were doing, and I was like looking at it, and I was like, I didn't tell Prajesh to do six office hours a week. Like, what is he doing? But anyway, he wanted to, so he did that. And I, I think you guys benefited, you know, particularly Prajesh with his hack nights and things like that. So, so this, this was great. Um, okay, exam. So the exam is uh, next Monday. Uh, it's in this room. Um, unfortunately, because it's a tight fit, but we'll, you know, so essentially the exam, we're going to handle it in the same way as the midterm. Uh, Carl reminded me to remind you that that requires you having a UB ID. So if you don't have a UB ID for some reason, uh, you have until Monday to get one so that you can take the exam. Um, the format is going to be the same as in previous years. So the midterm is typically an exam that people feel like is hard to complete in the time allotted. Um, how many people agree with that statement? Yeah, so the, the final exam is not. It's about twice as long, but you have about three times as long to do it. Um, so, you know, prep in the same way. There are 10 multiple choice questions, six short answer questions, one of which I'll release. Um, one or two medium answer questions, I haven't decided how many I, I want to bother writing, and then two long answer questions that you have to answer of potentially three. Um, the medium answer question on the exam is similar in, um, expectations to the long answer question on the midterm. And the medium answer question and most of the multiple choice and short answer questions will focus on material that we covered in the second half of the class. So I guarantee that the medium answer question will be on something that we covered since the midterm. So virtualization, file systems, things like that. Um, the long answer questions, anything is fair game. So if you look at previous exams, the long answer questions you know, can cover stuff from uh, the first half of the class, they can integrate material that you guys have done throughout the class, whatever. So, so those are designed to be more holistic. Um, any questions about the format? Okay, questions about the exam or material that we covered in the class or life skills. Well, I'll give you guys a minute to think about this. Let me make a few suggestions. Um, so now you're done with the class, right? And there may be some holes in your schedule. Um, some people were like, oh, I'm going to get out my gaming laptop. I don't know. I don't necessarily support that. But, um, but let me talk about some things that you can do next, at least here at UB. So there are some uh, decent courses that are, are follow-ons. How many people will be here next year taking classes in some form? OK, awesome. So some courses that you might like. So the database class, um, I would suggest taking this with Oliver. Um, these are just my personal preferences as far as people who I think teach the course in a way that's rigorous and will give you some chance to hack on stuff. So Oliver teaches a very nice version of this class where, you know, and, and he and I share a lot of the same approach to sort of how we do this. So, you know, the class is implementation heavy. You get to build real things. You know, a lot of the grading is automated. It's performance driven. So that's, that's a neat class. Um, distributed systems. So Steve's version of this class is, from what I hear, pretty cool. Some people are taking that now. Is anyone taking that now? Is it good? Yeah, OK. So a lot of the graduate students take these two classes together. Um, this is a good option. Uh, this is taught in the spring by Steve, I think, although I don't know about next year. Um, no promises. Networking, uh, again, another how many people know something about a computer network? OK, like you guys should. Yeah, come on. <laughs> the internet, right? Like, let's. So you can't graduate from, this is why people are like, oh, UB graduates don't know anything about how computers actually work. I mean, we should study, and you should study something about networking before you leave, right? That's kind of a component of the modern uh, computing environment. So um, Demetrios, again, teaches, a, uh, I think, a nice version of this class. There's some cool assignments. Um, people, graduate students took that as well with Demetrios. Was it good? OK, yeah, so, so Dave says it's good. What Dave says is good. Right? <laughs> I trust Dave's opinion of other classes. Um, there's also stuff at the graduate level. I don't, you know, again, my, my interest in the schedule here is waning. Um, but the, I think there's this class taught sometimes uh, by Steve or by other people, of uh, course, on advanced computer systems, some more of a sort of a project-based graduate class. Um, I do think undergraduates have taken this class, but we have to do weird things to give you guys credit for it. Um, yeah, so let me make sure not to let you leave without 
a ringing dedorsement of C as a programming language. Okay? C is a miserable, terrible programming language. It was invented a long time ago. It's not C's fault, it's just old. Right? Programming languages don't age well, unlike wines and bourbon and other things like that. Like you don't say, wow, you know, what a, had a great whiff of C. You know, it's been in the <laughs> bottle since 1960. Okay? C is an old language, and it's not a language. It, do not, it's, I'll just put it this way. Do not start a project in C unless you have no other choice. If you go to a company and they're like, our entire software stack is in C, I would be a little bit worried. You know, unless you're writing like kernel device drivers or stuff that's really, really low level, um, stay away from C as a programming language. It has a lot, of, a lot of ugly problems. It's just old. You know, again, I mean, C was a very important language a long time ago. Um, Better options, Go. Anyone programmed Go before? Okay, so all the Test 161 uh, tool is written in Go. It's awesome, it works really well. Um, Rust, anybody written themselves some Rust? Do you like Rust? It's different, okay. <laughs> yeah, so, but actually this is kind of, th this is cool because these languages are new. So there was this long period of time where kind of if you wanted to do systems programming and really get things to work, uh, quickly, um, which is not always a design requirement. I mean, my, my, my biggest piece of advice is don't use any of these languages if you don't have to. Like, write it in Python and be done um, if it doesn't really have to scream. But once you have to th build things that scale really hard or have really, really good performance, things like these systems programming languages are good options. Um, but there's also been a lot of development in this space. So both Go and Rust are relatively new languages, relatively new as in, you know, within the last decade. Now uh, that these are languages that people are using to build real things, um, and they work and they solve a lot of the well-known, uh, well-understood problems of things like C and I would argue C++. Does anyone like C++? Okay, interesting. Anyway, I've been, I, sh I, I, I criticize C++ a lot, but C++ and I really don't know each other very well, so I should probably do some C++ programming again, but every time I look at C++ examples online, I'm like, ugh. Okay, anyway, these are, nice, these are nice languages, a lot cleaner than C++. And again, really anything but C, you know. And I would probably say anything but any of these languages until you have a performance problem. Don't waste time, um, you know, getting things to go fast before you need to. Okay. Um, the, the last thing I, I would point out, I mean, is you guys develop these incredible skills. I mean, I saw this uh, poster up in, there, there's a version of this poster up in uh, the, the computer laboratory in Cambridge, uh, UK, about a couple months ago. And... I've, no, I've never seen this before, but I, I really feel like this describes my life now. Um, and I think your lives as, as you uh, get better at programming. I mean, you guys can really solve any problem you want. The question is just, what should you work on? Like, what you know, problem should you tackle? And I would think carefully about that because simply, you just don't have enough time, right? I have about six software projects sitting around, just personal things that I would like to do, and then probably that many different other tools I would like to build that are professionally related. Um, the, the barrier for you starts to be just time in the day, time in the week, rather than the specific ability to solve any of these problems. I know I can build all these things. Maybe I'm just an egotistical asshole and so I'm overconfident, which is probably also true. But, um, but I know I don't see any like, technical limitations to, to doing these things I want to do. I just don't have time to do them all. And so thinking about what you work on and the kind of projects that you tackle becomes really important. This is also, of course, true when you pick a job. Um, because you're gonna spend a lot of time working on just you know, one or two things. And you'll be able to do those things and you'll build cool stuff, um, but there's lots and lots of things that you're gonna look at as a computer scientist and be like, I could do a better job of that and not have time to uh, because we'll be doing other stuff. All right, back to the questions. Uh, any questions about the exam? Otherwise we can make this a very, very short class. Go out into the spring weather. There might be, yeah, no, no guarantees. Yeah, you will have to, let's put it this way, what is certain is that you will have to answer one medium question and two long answer questions. There may or may not be multiple options there. Just depends on how motivated I am between now and Sunday night. Okay, so this, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, let's put it this way, it's not all new questions. <laughs> Whether it's a mixture or not, I don't know. <laughs> um, you know, again, the midterm was supposed to be a mixture of new and old questions. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, I can, I still have a few questions that I haven't. 
It's, it's so frustrating though now when, you, when I write exam questions because I'll be like, I have this great idea for a question. And I start, I start writing it down and I'm like, wait. I go back, it's like on the 2013 final. You know, I've already used it. So most of my ideas, I'm like, oh, it's new. I have a short memory. So, um, but you know, the internet does not. So, yeah, there will be, there definitely will be repeats from past years. Um, there hopefully will be at least a few new questions. Yeah. Are there going to be any questions on the papers we went over? Oh, good question. What papers did we go over? I mean, there there may be questions on para virtualization. Um, I think like the hint stuff is fair game. I mean, that's pretty general. Um, there won't be, I mean, the, the high level stuff that we discussed in class is fair game on the papers. There won't be questions about details of the papers that you know, we didn't ask you to, to, to look at carefully or stuff that we didn't talk about in class. Yeah, but like comparing full and para virtualization as a technique and talking about what's different about them, like that would be fair game, right? That's stuff that we, we described in class, but no deep. Deep details. Yeah. Did we cover the MIT exo kernel? We did not. Yeah. So there are there are a few things from past exams that we didn't cover this year. That's a great point. We didn't talk about OS structure. Um, it's kind of a boring lecture. Um, we didn't talk about the the Mickens work on browser virtualization. Um, we didn't do the Linux performance paper that uh, we looked at last year. Uh, the content has changed a little bit year to year. So if, if you see something on an old exam, a question that's like referencing material that you don't think that we covered, then you know look at the slides, but it's possible. There, there were some things that didn't get covered this year, and if people want, I can try to put, write some of them down in, in a post. Those are the ones that come to mind immediately. Um, okay, so you guys did, you know, this class did extremely well on the assignments. I don't have the, the graph up here, but I, I went back for fun and sort of pulled statistics from the last few years. And even, well, I mean, you guys did, by the time people gave up on assignment 3.3, um, you know, you guys did a little bit better than last year's class uh, overall, which I think is, is pretty impressive. I mean, I know that this is somewhat of a self-selected group. At the same time, there are more undergraduates in this class. The undergraduates historically have tended to do not as well on the assignments as the graduate students. So I think those two things balance each other out. But I think overall, you guys did really well. I'm uh, looking forward to sharing the leaderboard with some people I know. Um, you know, I do have people that approach me saying, you know, can you identify you know, strong programmers to work at my company? And I don't do that anymore. I just send them that link. Um, so if you're still working on assignment 3.3 and you're trying to get up there, I mean, no, that, that doesn't stop going away. I send that link to people all the time, all throughout the year, um, you know, and I know that there's people that have, at least that's helped them get a job, right? Um, so good luck on the exam. I will see you guys on Monday. Um, thanks for a great semester. <laughs>